wanted to make a quick video of something someone told me the other day that I hadn't seen before and thought was a pretty great idea. So I've heard a lot of people use shims to help um, gut a lock. And that's super useful. Um, anything more advanced, you should 100% be doing it. Um, sometimes people use shims to pick a lock um, when they don't have a key and it's a quick way uh, to do it. Uh, you sometimes hear shims about using for padlocks. The thing that he recommended was using shims to help progressive pin. Now this is a goal P and his comment on it was it is a pain to take apart and put back together successfully because it has these little ball bearings that like to shoot out. And he's like if you're gonna progressive pin it he suggests using a shim. So I had not heard of this before and I didn't see any videos on it so I thought I would make one real quick. So what are we talking about here? Well, I've already, I've unscrewed part of the back here. I, I've got this on here so it doesn't come out when I open it up here. But um, the idea here is just like if you were using a shim to pick a lock, I'm going to put a shim in the back and then I'm going to proceed like I am picking the lock with a shim, except I'm not going to go all the way to the front. I'm going to shim some of the pins and then that will let me have it in a progressively pinned state. Now, a couple of things real quick. This may not feel exactly like the real thing, so um, you know your mileage may vary there. The other thing is once you have it open, um, that core is going to want to fall out. Okay, so um, that's why on this one, I, this normally goes around here and is screwed in both sides. Um, I have it screwed in part way so it can't fall out. Um, on some that have C-clips, you could probably put the C-clip back on um, for schlang where they screw on. You just need to be careful. Okay, so let me show you this real quick. Get it put up in this nice, nice uh, vise I made the other day. Thank you, Lock Chuck, for that design. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit that right back there. So I went ahead. Is this the right one? One of these has it marked. Um, where's the key? So I have this marked to where um, the pins are, just so I can quickly show this. And I'm not going to put a, a tensioning tool in. I'm just going to go back to that back pin. Now this one's got a little bit of a parasitic keyway, so it's a little hard. But I'm just going to go up and down until I can shove this shim in. suggest using a slightly thicker shim if you can. I usually use the ones out of uh, DVD players or the, the DVD security tags, but uh, for this I was finding it a little hard to get it at night. So I got the first one. I'm going to move out or the last pin, I guess. Move to the next one. So I'm just going up and down here oh, until I'm through. I've got the pin at the shear line. Okay, so I've got the back three pins. Back three, not the. No, I've got the back four pins now, I think. Yeah. So, um, so what that allows me to do is just the first two pins are in play. So I can pick this lock just getting the first two pins and then open it. Um, and then when I'm comfortable with that, I can pull it back just a little to hear a pop and then I've got it progressively pinned for a little more. Again, may not feel like the real thing. Again, be very careful that when you do get an open, you don't accidentally pour your, pull your core out and brick your lock. Um, but this was a super great idea that I just not seen anyone reference before. So, all right, enjoy.